<laughs> oh my gosh. I Dude, can't you're really tell. I gotta raise that quote. You're before. tucking. What's going on guys welcome back to another episode of rustom mod garage in this episode we're going to be solving one of the biggest issues on the c10 and hopefully solving the drivability of this thing to be able to go on long road trips without tire wear so we'll show you how we're going to do that so if you guys saw some of the previous episodes of the c10 build series you saw me talk about how we lowered the cadillac escalade frame so much that the front tires have a severe amount of camber as you can see here this is a large SUV that's lowered at a dramatic ride height. So lowering the vehicle causes the tire camber to be pretty severe whenever you drop it this low. We want to be able to drive this thing long distances. And one of the only real issues with driving this thing is just the amount of tire wear that that will cause from driving it so far. We got a box from DJM and hopefully this solves our issue. These control arms are supposed to correct the camber on lowered Silverados, Sierras, Yukons, and Tahos, so the Escalade should fall in line with that. So we wanna to try to throw these things on and see if this actually helps us or hurts us. My one fear is, so you can see how close the fender is to the wheel. So if the top of the wheel comes out, it might end up hurting us where it might rub the fender. We'll see, we'll see how it works, but hopefully this solves some of the issues that we're gonna have. So now we'll get into unboxing this thing and throwing it onto our truck. All right, got this thing all raised up in the air and you can see kind of what we're running here. We have the 22 inch transport wheels and then the lower control arm is a lot longer than those ones, causing the inside of the tire to be pushed out more. The, the upper control arm will be ended up being a little bit longer and the lower one will end up being a little bit shorter to cause the tire to kick in a little bit. So we'll see if this works. Hopefully this kit that I got works. We'll throw it on real quick and see what it looks like. For all you guys wanting to build one of these, here's a little bit better look of the inside of the frame rail here. So you can see our turbo piping goes down below the frame and then goes on up through the core support. And then the down pipe comes down here. So pretty slick. Our turbo mount is here, kind of dirty and looks like it's rubbing our tire a little bit. So we're gonna have to raise this thing up some, I have no idea. Huh. See, that's why you build cars and drive them, see what they do. But anyway, so we're going to pop the top of the coil over off and then end up having to pop the knuckle out and then swapping everything to everything that we have on the table there. So hopefully this stuff bolts in pretty easy. All right, Patrick is putting together the ball joints on these new control arms. And then the whole suspension has to come out to get these control arms in. I thought I could get by with just pulling them out, but it's a little bit more involved than I was thinking. We're going to pop the new ones in. This stuff was so rusted. This truck was a Northern truck whenever I got it. It was from, I think it was from Delaware. But I mean, you can see the amount of 
just junk that was in there. I snapped one of these bolts and it off just because it was so rusted. So hopefully I can get a replacement in there. But we're going to put this whole thing back together. I didn't film this side so I could figure out how to do it. And then I'll film the driver's side so I can show you guys how to do it. But that's what it looks like so far. Good progress. And then I'll show you how to put it together. Show it on the ground so you can see the difference. Hopefully it makes a big difference. And hopefully we don't have any binding issues with the CV. I saw somebody in the comments put that might have to shorten the CVs. And if we do, then we'll do that. We'll figure that out. But hopefully these solve our camber issues. I've seen people run this four wheel drive and not have a binding issues. I just don't know how low you can go. So we'll figure that out. And then I'll lower it down and show you how to do the next side. This side is installed, hopefully this works. We installed the upper control arm, bottom control arm, and this side should be done. But I just wanna lower it down to see the differences between this side and the other side because, you know, obviously the alignment's all whack right now because camber adjustments will probably not be right. But we'll see if, the, if it's closer than what it was before. So we'll put the wheels on and then lower it down. Thing is really low. <laughs> that is really low. That's way lower than it was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, can't you're really tell. I gotta raise that coil. You're tucking. That poor axle coming on the top out. Yeah. Alright, hold on. <laughs> Dude, she's slaying. <laughs> oh yeah. Dude, the whole truck's like I don't think it really fix the camper because it's that low. I know. Can they tell? I don't even know if they could tell. I don't know, it's kinda hard to see. I guess you guys can't really tell, but this lowered it an insane amount. It's probably, I don't know, three or four inches lower than it was. Is that like a drop control arm or something? Yeah. But the camber is still cambered, but I gotta raise it up, so. Give me a second. Let me raise it up like three inches and then that'll help it some, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, kind of to go up quite a ways. Is it on the fender still? No. No, okay, we moved it a little bit. It's still, eh. It probably needs to go up like another inch and a half. Two inches. Oh, this side's. I can't get my fingers in there. So you got well, a, yeah. a half inch. Well, before we don't even know, it wasn't even finishing going up because it was hitting the fender. Well. This no, I know, yeah. Up like two inches, so yeah. you gotta go up another inch and a half minimum. It's not on the turbo anymore, so. Yeah, well, at least it, 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 until you turn. Yeah. All right, guys, it's kind of hard to see how different it is. And also, we just raised it up and down so the suspension isn't completely settled yet, but you can see how much camber this side has. If you could look at the ground, you can see how much lower this side still is. I mean, I raised it up probably four inches on the coilover, and it still needs to go up three or four inches. Like it's very low. It literally was just sitting on the fender because it was so low. So, which makes sense, it's a drop arm. So the camber definitely is a little bit better and probably could be even better if we raise it up some. But you can see how low it is on this side, which we don't want, I, it looks cool. It's completely unfunctional and probably Not blow out. Fun. Yeah, can't turn, probably blow out those CVs. So anyway, I'm going to just keep raising the coilovers up until we get to a functional ride height. This but, is a little experimental. Nobody's, nobody's done this yes. with a four wheel drive. This is all for like two wheel drive lower trucks. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, there's guys out there that have lowered all wheel drive trucks, but nobody has a body like this on it too. So it's you know, we're the first person to probably end up doing this, especially at this this ride height. So we'll figure it out. And then that way it's a lot easier for you guys to figure it out. So we're kind of the test dummies here, but we're gonna raise it up a little bit 
and then uh, get back to it. But it's late, so we'll probably end up doing that tomorrow. All right, this I just thought of this while we were lifting it up. We can kind of see what the wheel is going to do with the lift. So this is what it looks like now, like as it is. It's very low. So let me raise it up a little bit. Yeah, like that. Probably right there is a good height. It's about equal with the rear. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Way better than it did. Here, if we go to this side. Yeah, you can see how much camera See the angle. And it's taller on that side. So, we go up. That would be perfect. So, if we could get the camera to look like that. We just got to get the ride height higher. That'll be good. Let's see what the CV angle looks like. Plenty of clearance, like we were hitting our turbo. So we have plenty of clearance there. The CV looks like a lifted Silverado, so it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, that's good. We yeah. just need to do that. We're gonna adjust the coilovers tomorrow and then get it dialed in. All right guys, it's the next day and we are installing the control arms on the C10. So I've been messing with it a few, trying to get the ride height perfect to where it looks good. And the camera is pretty much straight up and down. So I ended up having to raise the coilovers up quite a bit to be able to get it to where it looks right. But that's actually pretty good because that means the coilovers were max low before and now they're actually adjusted properly. So I'll show you guys what it looks like now. So if you can see this, the tire is pretty much where it was before I installed the control arms and the camber is pretty good. The car's not on the lift and it looks to be fairly straight up and down. I'll have to get an alignment, but for eyeballing it, it's not too bad. And this side is where it was before. It is still a little bit lower on that side. Definitely helped, we'll see how, see how they work. But if you can see down here, this is supposed to be for a two wheel drive only and the CV actually isn't at a terrible angle. So, looks like it'll work on the four-wheel drive stuff too. And I will put the part number for this kit in the description if you guys want to check it out. We're not sponsored or anything. We literally did not know if this would work on this truck or not. It looks like it should work. So if you guys are doing this and want to fix your front camber from lowering your Escalade or Yukon or Silverado or whatever you're putting under your C10, um, this looks like it'll do the trick. So I'll put that down there so you guys can see how it goes together. But now I'm gonna to get to installing this side and I'll show you guys how we do it on this side now that I know how it goes together. All right, so to start with this side, um, I would begin by pulling off the upper control arm. You have, I thought that I could get by with leaving the knuckle on and the axle in and stuff, but it ended up not working that way because the on the bottom control arm, you can't get the bottom control arm out unless you have to take the axle out because you can't lift it up. So we're going to have to pull the whole knuckle off and then put the new stuff in. So coilover also has to come out and then be adjusted to meet the other side. All in all, it's pretty simple. Just have to take everything out. So I'll show you how to do that. So to start, pull up a caliper and then we're gonna hang out over to the side and then we're gonna take the entire knuckle part. All right, in my car, this caliper bracket's really rusted, so I just pull the, the actual caliper off. Okay, so get that off. It's pretty straightforward. Pull the upper control arm off pull the shock slash coilover off, sway bar, tie rod, and then lower control arm. Pull it all off and we'll put it back in. Also, one thing that you want to do before you start pulling everything apart is mark where your camber adjustment is set because you're going to leave that the same. So just get like a paint pen and mark it. All right, so now we can just pop the upper control arm out and then get the entire lower part done. Okay, got this entire thing undone. So I should just be able to pull this. 
and boom. So that whole assembly comes out. Gotta take the hub off and put all the new stuff in. All right, got the whole not cool apart. So now I need to put all the new pieces back into where these go. So I'm gonna install the lower control arm and the upper control arm and then just put the knuckle back in. Alright, so I got the bottom new control arm in and the top new control arm. In the kit they also give you a sway bar link. And then I had to lengthen the coil over to meet the other side. So hopefully that this is the same. Originally this coil over was bottomed out on the stock Escalade suspension. So now you can see it's lengthened quite a bit. Going to put the knuckle on, put the axle in, tie rod, and that should be it. All right, so we've got the bottom control arm in, the top control arm, the calipers back on. So that's pretty much it. I got the coilover adjusted to where the other one was. So going to put the wheel on, set it on the ground, and that should be done. So hopefully we have no more severe camber in the front. This is pretty easy to do. Just takes quite a bit of effort to get the other old stuff off. But for once, it's actually easier going together than it is pulling everything apart. So. Make sure you get your camber set um, if you go to alignment shop to get this aligned after you install this stuff and that should be good to go. So now we're going to put the wheels on and see what it looks like. Probably have to fine tune the coilover to adjust the ride height a little bit but should be good to go after that. Alright so now both sides are done and it's pretty good. The alignment is really far off and the rack is completely out of whack, but the ride height is about perfect. So it's hard to tell because the wheels turned on this side, but there is no severe camber anymore. It's perfect. Yeah, I would say these work pretty good. We'll see how much these rub because the Escalade is so much wider than the C10 frame. It's pretty close to this. Might have to roll these fenders a little bit more, but it should work. So, yeah, once I get an alignment, this thing should be pretty good. So I definitely recommend that kit if you guys are doing this kind of swap. We'll see how it lasts and we'll see how many miles I put on it and see how well everything goes. But but the kit looks pretty good in there. The tire is nice and straight and the axle doesn't look like it's at too severe of an angle. So it should be pretty good. We will see how it works. So that's gonna do it for the install of the control arms. All right guys, it's been a few days so we could get this truck running and driving. So that way we could drive on the control arms, get everything settled to see how it looks. And it looks pretty good. I would definitely recommend these control arms. I'll show you guys real quick. So if you can see, I raise it up a little bit more and it's perfect. Ride height right where I'd want it. The camber is pretty much resolved. You can see on this side, there's very, very little camber. I added a little bit just so I could clear my fender here. Um, it gets pretty tight, but it's not too bad. So it really wouldn't look abnormal seeing this thing drive down the road now. At LS Fest, everybody's kind of giving us a weird look because it had such severe camber whenever we were driving down the road, but now I don't think you would be able to tell at all. It looks pretty good. So I would definitely recommend these control arms if you guys are gonna go this low with a Escalade swap under your C10. But that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe so you can see more C10 content. We're gonna be doing a bunch more stuff to this in the future. So like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, we have a TikTok. All the social media accounts are RustoMod. So, Go follow those accounts and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks so much.